Welcome to the video series Exploring Abstract Algebra 2. To skip to any topic in this series, you may click on it at any time. I'm Dr. Matt Salamone, and I'm a professor here at Bridgewater State University in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. The purpose of this series of videos is to develop intuition about rings, fields, and polynomials, all with an eye toward answering the question, what is it that's so special about polynomials of degree 5 that make them so different from polynomials of degree 2, 3, and 4. This is a series of videos that proceeds along several threads, and each of the threads, as you'll see, moves from left to right with prerequisite material. The first thread is a thread that reintroduces us to the concepts of group theory that will be important to answering the main questions of the course. First, we look at a review of finite groups, reviewing some of the main results that you'll need from a first semester course in abstract algebra. Then we'll review some results about subgroups and cosets of subgroups, homomorphisms from one group to another, normal subgroups and quotients of groups by their normal subgroups. This turns out to be an important topic. Representations of groups, which is not always a topic that's covered at this level, but I think it's important to motivate what comes next. Because then we look at the idea of what conjugacy inside a finite group is, what it can do for us, and how we can use those ideas to find out that there is some trouble with the alternating group A5 that makes it different from the alternating groups on fewer symbols. And that concludes the group thread. Then there's a thread that explores some of the basic ideas behind ring theory, field theory, and Galois theory of polynomials. First we'll look at polynomials in general and get a sense of what Galois idea was for how field theory has something to do with locating the solutions of polynomial equations. Then we'll talk a little bit about discriminants of polynomials and how they're a little bit more than maybe your high school algebra teacher gave them credit for. We'll talk about rings in general and ideals within rings and the concept of irreducibility. When in a ring are we able to factor an element and when is it not possible to factor an element? And then we'll have an introduction to fields, especially fields as quotients of rings. And on the final, longest thread of the course, we'll explore field theory and Galois theory in depth, beginning with the idea of a field which is a simple extension of the rational numbers. Then we'll look at a classical example of a field called the field of constructible numbers that comes from classical questions in geometry. After that, we'll talk about minimal polynomials and how polynomials themselves can be used to construct extensions of fields. And then the all-important concept of a normal extension a field extension in which we can find all of the roots of a given polynomial. Then we'll talk about splitting fields. This is a canonical way of associating to every polynomial a field that contains all of its roots. We'll look at the cyclotomic fields as a classical example of how to adjoin just enough of the complex numbers to a number field in order to solve polynomials of a given degree. Then we'll look at the all-important concept of field automorphisms. How do we think of what the symmetries of a field are in a particular way that helps us understand the structure of that field? We'll look at how automorphisms behave with respect to the roots of polynomials, specifically how automorphisms permute the roots of uh, polynomials over a base. And then the most important result in the entire course is the Galois correspondence that shows us how field theory and group theory are really just two sides of the same coin. We'll look at radical extensions, which are the kinds of extension fields in which we can find the roots of polynomials that have formulas and radicals for their solution. After all of this is built up, we'll finally be ready to tackle the mystery of quintic impossible. Why is it that polynomials of degree 5 do not have a formula in radicals to solve them? And then just to put the icing on the cake, we'll conclude by looking at how all of these pieces fit together to furnish a proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So feel free to get started anywhere in this list of topics to the right. You may also decide to use these videos for any purpose, public or private, as long as you give attribution and a link to this YouTube channel. Good luck, happy exploring, and thanks for watching.